thousand tongues to sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the glories of my God and King. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. verse Jesus the Jesus the name that comes by fears blessed be the name of the Lord just music in music in the sinners ears blessed be the name of the Lord you got it here we go to the chorus blessed be the name blessed be the name blessed be the name of the Lord the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's sing that third, listen to it, he breaks the power of castle sin, and then the second, his blood can make the fountains, what, clean. Sing it with me, ready? He breaks the power of castle sin, blessed be the name of the Lord, his blood can make the foulest name of the Lord. You got it. Here we go, chorus. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay, just a minute. Brother Grady, come on up here, Grady. Grady ain't sang with me in a long time. I like people tall. You know why? Makes me feel good. Amen. When I came to this church, Grady was about my height. Now look, I can't even touch his head hardly. Okay, Grady, sing it with me. Here we go. Number four. Here we go. Ready? I'll never shall forget that day. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When Jesus washed my sins away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sing it with us. Here we go. Ready? Chorus. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Grady. Thank you all. Amen. As I always say, Brother Glenn, the wisdom will come from the word. Amen. Amen. Not from me, but from the Lord. Good evening. Happy Wednesday evening to you. Hope that y'all are having a great week. It feels like spring, doesn't it? The Lord has given us a, a taste of an early spring, and then you know it's going to turn cold again, and we're, we're, we're going to have to hibernate a few more weeks probably. But um, praise the Lord that we're able to be here this evening. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Amen. Father, we do thank you for your goodness, Lord, and we do Enjoy the beautiful sunshine that we have had this week, Lord, and the warmer temperatures. And, Lord, it just prepares our heart as we move into spring. We think of Easter, Lord. We think of the resurrection. We think of the new life that we have through faith in you. Father, we just thank you for this season. Lord, as we move into our time now of looking into your word, Lord, that wisdom that we do seek, Lord, comes from you. And, Lord, we just pray that as we look at the passage that, that you have laid on my heart, and, Lord, we just ask that the Spirit will so move and give us understanding. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, I am glad that you're here this evening. I want to finish where we left off Sunday morning. We were in Ephesians chapter 6, and uh, we made it from verses 10 through 17, and we left off in verse 18. But I do want to go back, and I'm not going to go back and, and re-preach Sunday morning, or we'll have to finish this another service but I want to point out a few things, um, because when we get to verses 18 through 20, we're talking about persevering in prayer. And though prayer is not listed as one of the pieces of the armor, certainly it's the atmosphere that we're to live in. And folks, what a privilege we have. Tonight is a privilege to be able to come together as the body of Christ, and we're able to lift concerns to the Lord. 
Isn't it an amazing thing when we can get alone with the Lord or come together as the body of Christ and we can, can make our petitions to the Lord and we know because of our faith in Christ, He hears us. Amen. I know you're here tonight with some concerns on your heart. Maybe they're personal. Maybe you have family members that need lifting in prayer. Certainly there's all kind of things. And to know that we have a Heavenly Father that loves us and wants to hear from us. And He doesn't just want to hear, He answers if we're praying out of his will, he'll guide us back on track. If we're praying in his will, we'll see him work in a mighty way. So we can't go wrong if we trust and go to him in faith and in prayer. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about this morning or Sunday morning. And uh, I don't want to talk about this morning. It's done, it's done past. But let's talk about what we looked at this past Sunday morning, Sunday morning. All right, we talked on a, a high note to begin with, and that's where... Paul begins here in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. He reminds us that our strength comes from the Lord and, and we need to remember that. I want to look at that verse and we're not going to look at every single thing here as I said and spend a lot of time on it or we'll never get through. But Paul reminds us in Ephesians 6 and in verse 10 he says, finally my brethren be strong in the Lord. That's important. Be strong in the Lord in the power of of his might. And he's going to mention it in verse 11. He's going to say it again in verse 13. There's a struggle, so here's what we're to do. We are to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the schemes of the devil. Folks, from the moment we trusted Christ, we have been in a battle. And the devil is more powerful than we are. He is more sneaky and crafty than we are. I mean, he's had thousands of years to learn how to master the art of manipulating us. And if he fails in one area, then he'll come and try to get us in another area. That is why it is so important to have on the whole armor of God. Now, sometimes there may be seasons in our lives that we say, I don't really feel like the devil is after me. Well, he does give a kind of leaves us be, you know, it's, it's seasons of being under attack and then seasons of not being under attack. But we got to be careful because the devil does not waste his ammunition on Christians that are not faithful. So if you're not making a difference in the kingdom, if you're not loving the Lord, if I'm not loving the Lord with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength, then I'm really not causing any trouble for the devil, so he's probably not going to pursue me. Now, humanly speaking, we think, man, so the closer I get with the Lord, the more trials I'm going to experience, the more persecution, the more attacks from the devil I'm going to experience. Folks, probably so, but you know what? If we've got on the whole armor of God, and, and what did Paul tell us here in verse 10? That we're to stand strong in, in God's mighty power. Folks, even under the attacks of the devil, he is not more powerful than our Lord. And he has already been defeated. So we don't, have to let us scare, we don't have to let the fact that he will pursue us scare us. We just need to keep our eyes on Christ and make sure that we have on the whole armor of God because that is when we begin to see God work in and through us. And folks, that's a blessing. Well, he kind of goes through a hierarchy here. And he talks about the principalities and the powers, and that seems to allude to the fact there's, that there's a hierarchy in the devil's kingdom. Because remember, he's not omnipotent, God is. He's not omnipresent, God is. He's not omniscient, God is. And so the devil has to have his, his host of demons to help him do the things that he does. So let's get into the strategy. Our strength is the Lord. Our struggle is going to be with the devil. And by the way, there is one thing I want to point out. I don't want to forget this. Um, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Remember we made that point Sunday morning. People may persecute us. They may lie to us. They may cheat us. I mean, they can, do, they can even harm us and maybe even kill us. But folks, they're just pawns in the devil's hands. It's important for us as believers in Christ to realize where the evil is coming from and, and, and the fact that we need to be praying for those that persecute us. So then we got into our strategy, putting on the whole armor of God. Remember the different pieces. Let's read through them again. Uh, we'll, we'll pick up in verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand... 
Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now remember, Paul is in jail. He spent a lot of time in jail, and he's chained to a Roman soldier, so we can easily understand where he got this analogy as he's looking at this soldier and he's looking at the different pieces. Now what does armor do for a soldier? It protects him and allows him to do the task at hand. So Paul is going to take those literal physical pieces of armor that a Roman soldier would have used, and he begins to think of our spiritual warfare. Now remember, our fight is, 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 is not against other people, though the devil may be using other people to hurt us. I, I, it is the devil that is coming against us. But when we stand in his power and in his might, and we have on the whole armor of God, and I, I don't have time to go through all these pieces again, but hey, what did the belt do? It cinched everything together on the Roman soldier, and it kind of hooked the lower parts of the armor to the upper parts. That is what truth does to us. We're to stand in truth. Remember, there is no premium in ignorance. Everything that we need to know about how to have a relationship with God, about how to have a relationship with with one another, how we're to conduct ourselves in a sinful world, how we're to conduct ourselves in the family relationship. Everything that God wants us to know about life on this earth, about the life that is to come for us as believers, we have in the Word of God. If the Word of God speaks on it, we can carry it to the bank. Now, there may be something that we, we wonder, you know, I, I, that's confusing to me because there are parts of Scripture that can be difficult to understand. But folks, it's still the eternal and errant word of God, and, and it's the truth. We, we can stand on it. So the truth is our foundation. The breastplate guards the heart. We're to guard our hearts. You cannot walk outside the doors of this church and, and not see things that you shouldn't see or hear things that you should not hear. So it is so important that our eyes are so focused on the Lord. And folks, when sin comes in, even the hint of sin We've got to be ready to confess it. We've got to be ready to say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me of this, and, and, and to live that holy life that Christ wants us to live. Now, of course, our feet being shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. If there ever is any peace, it is only going to be through faith in Christ. People right now that are starving to death, of course, we have an obligation to meet their need by feeding them. The Bible tells us to do that by loving on them. But you know what? really their most essential need, and, and James talks about this. I mean, we can't just neglect the, 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 the hunger side or the physical side there, but at the very core, their need is to have a relationship with Christ first. To have a relationship with Christ is more important than having food on the table. To have a relationship with Christ is the most important thing. That's the only way to have peace with God. And, and, and so the, the preparation, our, our feet ready, we're standing firm. We're ready to do what God wants us to do, to be in the center of God's will and to go where God tells us to go and to stand still when he tells us to stand still because there are people that need the gospel, the shield of faith. Do you ever have your faith interrupted? Of course we do. The devil will, will, will remind you of some fear, it may be a, of something that may never happen, but yet we're fearful about it. Or it may be something that you're actually going through, and, and the devil will just kind of whisper in your ear, you're not going to make it through this. And, and we always look at other people's lives, don't we? We look at them and we think, man, they have it all together. It just seems like God is blessing them, and there's always a cloud over me. Well, the truth of the matter is we all struggle, don't we? We all struggle. And if we're not careful, the devil can use fear. He can use moral failure. He, he can use a, a seemingly shipwreck of a life that, that seems to be inevitable to us. He can use all of these tactics. But you know what faith does? Faith stands firm and says, I don't understand this. I don't even have a solution for this, but God does. And he's not going to leave me. What was the next one? Oh, the helmet of salvation. 
You know, God has saved us if we've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you realize that that is a, a fact? The devil cannot pry us out of the hands of the Lord. Isn't it wonderful to have security in your salvation? Now, we don't always feel saved, do we? We don't. Salvation is not just a feeling, although there's feelings involved. It's a fact. If we've trusted Christ, we are saved. We don't have to worry one moment about being separated from God. We don't have to worry about spending eternity without the Lord. And, and so whenever these attacks come against us, that heaven of salvation, because the thought is where most of the temptation will, 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 the seed will begin to blossom, and we think about it, and we roll it over in our minds, and then it carries into our action. Well, folks, if we're secure in our salvation, then we're going to be secure that God is leading and sustaining us and that he knows what he's doing. The sword of the Spirit. Hey, it's what Jesus used when he was tempted. That is what is so important to memorize scriptures. Not just random scriptures, but when, when the devil comes against you, the Holy Spirit will give you just the scripture you need and, and quote it out loud if you need to. The devil cannot stand in the presence of God's word. So that is all of the stuff that we went through. The Lord is our power. There is a struggle with the devil. And if you are on fire for the Lord, which we all need to be, then he is shooting his fiery arrows at you. But because of the pieces of the armor, and we can't just put on one or two pieces, what would a soldier be like that only had on the, the shoes or, or only had on the helmet? I mean, we've got to put on every single piece. How do we put them on? I know it's a foreign concept to us because we don't literally put on armor, but in a spiritual sense, if we're grounded in the truth, if we're guarding our hearts, if our feet are always ready to do the will of God and to stand firm, and if we have that shield of faith, no matter what the devil throws at us, we're not going to let it scare us or, or cause us to retreat because we know God's in control. If our thoughts are protected and we're secure in our salvation and we're using the word of God, folks, the devil does not have a chance. Even though he's more powerful and more sneaky and creative than we are. So, let's get to where we did not get Sunday morning. Verse 18 so if our strength is the Lord and our struggle is, is with the, the devil and his cohorts, our strategy is to put on the entire armor of God and to persevere in prayer. And that is what Paul reminds us of here. We're to pray constantly. We're to live in an atmosphere of prayer. Look at verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Several things there. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all of the saints. We're... To pray about all kinds of things. Do you realize there's times of private prayer, right? I mean, there's times where we get along with the Lord and it may be just a, a, a quick something that we need strength for. Or we may be pulling out our prayer list and going down the line praying for the different things and different people that are near and dear to our hearts. But there's time of public prayer. As I said when we began tonight, what a privilege to know God doesn't go on vacation. He doesn't turn the ringer of his phone off. He's always attuned to our needs. And hello, he, he knows what's going on anyway. You know what often happens in prayer? And, you know, I'm ashamed to admit this, but I know my heart. Has this ever happened to you? And you don't have to tell me. But you have every intention of praying. And then everything that's going to distract you begins to distract you. Does that ever happen to anybody? I mean, that's going to be, the phone may not ring all day, but when you're really getting in tune with the Lord and really wanting to have that time of, com of communication with the Lord, you know, all of these distractions will come. And sometimes it's, it's internal distractions. It's not always something external. I mean, has this ever happened to you? All right, let's just say, and this is hypothetical, you're praying for dear old Aunt Sally. Dear Aunt Sally is going to have surgery in the morning. And you love her dearly, and so you, you feel you need to bring that to the Lord. 
So you get alone, and you're praying with the Lord, and you're praying for dear Aunt Sally's surgery, and then you remember, dear Aunt Sally makes a good apple pie. And you think, man, I wish I had one of dear Aunt Sally's apple pies, but you know she's having surgery tomorrow, so she can't make one. But I remember Publix has them on sale. I'll pick me one up tomorrow. And then when we're thinking about that, we're like, you know, I haven't picked my dry cleaning up. On the way to Publix, I'm going to get my dry cleaning. And oh, little Poopsie, the dog, is out of heartwormer, so I better stop by the vet. And before long, we've had every intention of, of, of having a, a conversation with our Lord about dear Aunt Sally and her needs, and we've let it get sidetracked with daydreaming, and we're thinking about the dog needing to go to the vet. I mean, that happens to all of us. So Paul is saying here, guard against that. Put on the armor of God so that you'll stand or be able to withstand these schemes of the devil. But we're to live in an atmosphere of prayer. Do you realize there may be a soul that is one beat away from stepping into eternity and the prayer of intercession that we have for them could change their eternal destiny? Do you realize that, that, that I'm going to think about this. Oh my goodness. I wonder what the schemes, I'm glad I don't know because it would give us a heart attack probably, but can you imagine the spiritual battle in the unseen world that is taking place on Sunday when Brother Glenn is leading these beautiful hymns and different ones are singing and I stand up to preach the word of God. We don't know what's going on in the pews. We don't know what struggles are going on. We need to be praying for those situations. God, let the Spirit so move. We need to be praying about things that are going on in our country and in our world. We need to be praying for our families because, folks, the biblical example of the family is going down the drain. And I'm preaching to the choir. And no hatred in that or, or no pointing fingers at anyone. The simple matter of the fact, the devil is behind that. I want you to think about it. I read something today, and it's interesting because I don't know that I've ever preached on it. I've read it, and you've heard it. But I was reading about the Exodus. You know, Moses is like, Lord, oh my goodness, send somebody else. I'm slow of speech. And, you know, him and God have this thing. They go back and forth, and finally Aaron is his mouthpiece. And they work all that out. And then Moses finally gets back to Pharaoh. And, of course, God was in all of this. Pharaoh would see these miraculous signs that God was allowing Moses and Aaron to perform. Remember with the rod? Moses would lay it down, it would become a serpent. But here's something I had never noticed before. What was Pharaoh's magicians doing during that whole process? Do you remember that? A lot of, it's really interesting though, because these, these false prophets, spiritists, whatever you want to call Pharaoh's magicians, were able to mimic a lot of the same miracles that Moses was able to do. For instance, when Moses laid his rod down and it become a serpent, they laid their rods down and they become serpents too. But do you remember Moses' rod ate up their rod? And, and there were several other things. But if you notice, when it come to life-giving, those false servants were not able to do it. Because remember, the sand became what? Gnats? The dust of the ground become gnats. But those false prophets weren't able to duplicate that one. And so it's just interesting there to see how the power of God is real and, and, and how the devil is able to manipulate and change things around, but he's not God. Now I say all of that to say, and let me tie it back in, we read in the Word of God, well, I've already brought it up, the biblical definition of what a family should be. So what does the devil try to do to get back at God? He tries to alter that into something that looks beautiful on a, on, on a, a sinful human kind of view, right? I mean, what's wrong with it? But then again, it goes against the Word of God. That's what's wrong with it. And if God created us, he knows what's really good for us. Now, that's just one example. I mean, the devil tries counterfeit with everything, just like those magician, magicians were trying to manipulate what the man of God was doing, but it was a counterfeit version of it. That's exactly what the devil tries to do today. He tries to convince us, 
that old Southern Baptist stuff, that walking down the aisle and giving your heart to Christ and living for the Lord, that's outdated. We can go to church and have a version of that and love one another and sing songs and feel good. And we need to come to church and feel good. Singing songs should do that. But I'm telling you, to just come as a, a social order and, and, and just to kind of pick out the parts of the Bible that we think are accurate and, and the parts that we want to deal with, that's not what God wants. He's wanting all of our hearts. And, and, and so the devil manipulates it. We need to be praying for that. We need to be praying for our families. I don't know. The older I get, the more it is heartbreaking And I don't really even know how to put it into words. But the more it is heartbreaking to see people experiencing, I, I won't say a weaker version of faith because God knows the heart. But you know, for myself included, I'm not excluding myself from anyone else. The Lord needs to be the foundation. The Lord needs to be the reason that we're coming to worship. Lisa and I were having a conversation and her being in seminary has really helped me because I was there many, many moons ago. And hearing some of the things that she's learning, and I don't know, it's just forced me to see things in a new light. But we were having this conversation. And, you know, I think we kind of get it backwards in church sometimes. And, and, and be careful how you interpret this. Because I love to get people plugged in, right? But I think sometimes we've missed the mark. And please, this is Wednesday night crowd, and I know some people will be watching this later, so, so don't be offended by this, because we never are where we want to be. You understand what I'm saying? I've been a Christian for a lot of years, and I strive to grow and love Jesus more every single day. But, but here's the point. I think sometimes we want to get people in, and we need to do that. That's not what I'm talking about. But we, we get them in, and we want to put them in a position, maybe teaching Sunday school, or maybe as a deacon, or, or, or maybe as a mission person, and their heart is not ready for that. Do you understand what I'm talking about? We are never going to serve the Lord the way he needs to be served if it's not right in here, if we don't have on the armor of God. Now, granted, none of us, none of us would ever teach Sunday school because we never feel like we've arrived. I'm not saying you've got to be a spiritual giant. I'm saying I think sometimes as believers... We, we don't work hard enough to disciple. We want to get people in the church so badly, and we want the numbers to be awesome, and, and, and we want to look and have more chairs filled, but we're not really working on discipling them. So the problem is the devil throws a little controversy in their life, and they're gone. But I'm telling you, if you're firm in your faith, a little controversy is not going to run you out the door. I don't know, I'm all over the page tonight, but that's the beauty of Wednesday night. It's just the home folk, right? So, we got to persevere in prayer for all the saints. Now, Paul writes this numerous times. I know he was concerned about the physical, and I know he was concerned, like I said earlier, about dear Aunt Sally's surgery in the morning. And by the way, I don't have a dear Aunt Sally, so that was hypothetical. But, he was more concerned with the spiritual. And we see that again and again. Look, look at what he asked for prayer for. Verse 19, And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. He's being specific here. He's saying pray constantly about all kinds of things. Live in an atmosphere of prayer. You can knock on heaven's door. You have the ear of the Lord. He wants to know all about your day, all about your dreams, all about your frustrations. Hello, we're his children. He knows about us anyway. We honor him to come to him. And when he is honored, we are blessed. That's just how it works. And Paul is saying here, guys... He's not praying that he can be released. You notice that? He's saying, pray I have boldness while I'm chained to this Roman soldier to make the mystery of the gospel known. How many of us ever pray for that? 
Another thing Lisa and I were talking about, and I'm about to be done. But it makes sense now why we don't like to share our faith. It makes sense. If we don't understand what we believe and why we believe it, how can we convince somebody else they need it? And somewhere along the, the way, we've told people, you know, you got to share your faith, you got to share your faith, you got to share your faith, you got to share your faith. And we've never equipped them to understand what they actually believe. How can you tell someone about an apple pie if you've never eaten one? Now, granted, if you are a believer, you can share your testimony because it's just telling someone what Jesus has done in your heart. I understand that. And I've said this a thousand and ten times. You don't have to be able to quote the entire Bible to share your faith with somebody. You just tell them what Jesus has done for you. And that still stands. But I'm going to tell you, God does not put a premium on ignorance. And I think we're watering down what we do as believers. We need to get in this book and understand why do I believe Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no excuse not to do that. Why do I believe that God's perfect plan for the family is his perfect plan? Why do I believe he's coming back? And I know these are things that, that, that we wrestle with. We believe, and, and it's not always a black and white answer. Prayer. Maybe that's one of the things we need to be praying about. Lord, give me wisdom. Give me a desire to know more of who you are. Now I'm going to wrap it all up because this is a little loose tonight than how we normally would have a service. I realize that. And a lot of what I've said tonight, I didn't know I was going to say. But here's the deal. Our strength is the Lord. And if you've trusted Christ, your salvation is secure and everything that you need to be more than a conqueror is at your disposal. It's going to be a struggle until the day we die. And the more dedicated you become to the Lord, hey, I, I don't believe in sugarcoating it. It is not going to be easy. Preachers do their congregation a terrible disservice to always smile and say, it's always going to be so awesome. It's not always awesome. There are nights that are sleepless, and there are days when you do more crying than you do laughing. But you know what? It's worth it. Because we have a Savior that will never leave and forsake us. And He's not only promised us the best is yet to come, He's promised us that we're yoked with Him, and every tear that we shed, He's shedding too. And every burden that we're bearing, He's bearing too. Hey, He's worth it. He's worth it. He died for us. And so there's a struggle with the devil. He's going to attack us in our homes, in our churches, in our thought life. But you know what? If we've got on the whole armor of God, we're going to be okay. God is going to see us through. And we're going to see his good and perfect and acceptable will carried out through our lives. But we've got to be in an atmosphere of prayer. Being watchful. Being guarded against it. My prayer time is as important to me as my supper is. That's the kind of mentality we got to have. And actually, it needs to be more important. Some of us could do without some meals, and that'd be good for us. You know how you have a level-headed pastor? He's got a bubble in the middle. There you go. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Oh, mercy. I pray the Spirit has led through this. I pray, Lord, that we will be a people that is honoring to you. I pray, Lord, whatever the devil has, whatever trap he has waiting to be that snare, that, Lord, the, the trap would spring without catching us because we have the whole armor on. Lord, let us be diligent in our prayer. Lord, for physical needs, but, Lord, certainly for those spiritual needs. Let us pray for the lost. Let us pray for the saint that is maybe missing a piece of armor or two. Oh, Lord, we love you and ask this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.